Hello. I love our planet, don't you? Those of us who live in this region are blessed with stellar views, plenty of wildlife, and the great outdoors. That's why we live here, right? We have an asset in our region worth protecting. The majestic Lake Tahoe is easily accessible to the general public. You can swim in the crystal blue waters. You can drink the water, and there's so many forms of recreation. The reason Lake Tahoe is as blue as it is is because of all the work that researchers and environmental groups have done throughout the years. It's no coincidence that we have visitors every year from over the world coming to visit. The planet is being destroyed by humans, and much of the world is in denial about it. Indeed, there's misinformation leading us to believe that we can continue to live our lives as is, uninterrupted. And that illusion is harmful because it prevents, it prevents us from taking action. Myself, I've been in the environmental world for many years, and I was part of a second group that thought, it's too late, it's too big of a problem, there's nothing I can do to make a difference, and that illusion is equally as harmful. I did a lot of soul-searching and came to an agreement with the universe that I would take every opportunity presented to me to make change. And that's why I'm here today, to speak with you about how to change behavior for a sustainable future. There's a lot of refutable information about climate change and the status of our planet, but here's one thing we can't ignore. There are five garbage patches the size of Texas in our ocean. Now, how many of you have heard about the North Pacific garbage patch? Well, a lot of people have. That's where garbage that's dumped in our oceans or washed off our shore gets caught up in the ocean currents of the North Pacific gyre. There are two concentrations, one near Japan and one between Hawaii and California. The garbage patch was brought to our attention by Captain Charles Moore, who one weekend was participating in a yachting race in the Hawaiian Islands and was returning home to California and noticed plastic all around his yacht. Imagine that. The plastic bottle caps, plastic bags, water bottles and styrofoam cups, they're not biodegradable. Instead, they break up into tinier and tinier pieces called microbeads. These microbeads and other plastics cannot be gathered up, and they wreak havoc with the marine life who mistakes them for fish food. You may have seen the famous pictures of the albatross bird who ingests plastics and feeds them to her chicks, and they all die of starvation and ruptured organs. Some of the larger sea animals get caught up in abandoned nets, and they drown. There are five garbage patches, not one, but five garbage patches in our ocean. Now, why do we care? Well, about a third of the world's population relies upon seafood as its primary food source. And as we continue to pollute our oceans and overfish, we're talking about mass human extinction. Now, the garbage we see in the ocean is just the tip of the iceberg. What lies underneath is a much greater problem, which is how we consume and dispose of our waste. Our oceans aren't our only garbage piles. Here in Nevada, we have a huge waste problem. Did you know that California ships hundreds of tons of garbage daily from Sacramento and South Lake to our Lockwood uh, landfill? And in southern Nevada, NorCal ships about 4,000 tons a day of garbage from southern California to southern Nevada landfills. So out of sight, out of mind. And other states, for years, shipped their nuclear waste to Yucca Mountain. Right here in northern Nevada, we have a huge illegal dumping problem. An organization called Keep Truckee Meadows Beautiful, which is known for its river and wilderness cleanups, last year collected 145 tons of garbage from illegal dumping. If we're not mindful, Nevada is going to become our next big garbage ocean. Now, the big question is, 
what do we do about it? Did you know that education, merely standing here and talking to you about why we should or should not do something, has very little effect on changing behavior? And it's going to require exponential changes in behavior to make sure that we have a planet to pass on to your children and mine. Luckily, there are some scientific methods for changing behavior, and I'm going to talk about the community-based social marketing methodology promulgated by Doug Mackenzie Moore. It's a five-step process, and I'm going to use I'm going to go through each of these five steps using a case study. From a local initiative, the League to Save Lake Tahoe is most known for its Keep Tahoe Blue campaign. It was started in 1957 when a group of concerned citizens were concerned about the overdevelopment around Lake Tahoe. Did you know, for example, they were planning a five, a four-lane freeway to encircle the lake, and they were going to put a bridge over Emerald Bay? Imagine that. So the league, over the years, has taken advantage of legislation tools to change behavior, but there's a lot of things that the league does that relies upon voluntary action from from people like us to keep the lake blue. And they needed so so they're using a community-based behavior change model. The first step in changing behavior is selecting. What behavior it is you want to change? Not all behaviors are equal, and you plot them on the graph where the y-axis is the impact that the behavior will have, and the x-axis is the probability that your intended community will take it on. I'm plotting all the different behaviors that the league wants to address, and today we're going to focus on just one. This is the league's number one initiative at the moment. And it's guarding against invasive species. Now, what are invasive species? They're weeds. Two such weeds were introduced to North America as decorations for fish tanks, and somehow they made a home in Lake Tahoe. This is a problem because it destroys the lake clarity. It's not very pretty on the shoreline, and it gets caught up in recreational equipment motors. There's a lot of agencies addressing this problem. But it's a huge problem, and they can't possibly find all the infestations across the entire lake. So they really needed to get the public involved. Step two in changing behavior is identifying barriers and benefits. This is where a lot of research is done, and I'm pretty certain that the league read articles and reports about how other regions dealt with their infestation problem. They also did a focus group to kind of vet out. How they were going to address this problem, and they came up with the following benefits and barriers in terms of getting the public involved in their program. Benefits are pretty obvious: clean lake, clear shoreline. Nobody wants weeds caught up in their recreational vehicles, and if they catch the problem early, it's much less expensive, and there's less of a chance that new invasive species will take home in Lake Tahoe. Some of the barriers are that people. Don't feel like they can do anything, so they don't do anything. Does that sound familiar? People think that someone else is going to deal with the problem, and it's human nature. Nobody likes being told what to do. And finally, we know that half of the residents in Lake Tahoe are, have secondary homes there, so they're there on vacation and they don't have a lot of time for volunteering. The third step in changing behavior is coming up with a marketing strategy or an outreach strategy, and what the league came up with is "Stay on the Lake, Protect While You Play," and it's targeted at all the water enthusiasts: the scuba divers, the paddlers, the swimmers, the beachgoers, the boaters,、um, to get them to also keep an eye on the lake for invasive species. Now. That they've identified barriers and benefits, and they have a nice campaign. You got to test market it. If you don't, if you go to your entire community, any mistakes you make are very, very costly. They did their piloting in South Lake Tahoe. They had four trainings, and they taught people like us how to identify the plants 
and then they have to fill out a survey so that the agencies know where to find them. They had 37 volunteers in the pilot, and they had 24 surveys that were returned. And what they found out is that the surveys were inconvenient, and nobody was turning them in. So this is a perfect time to fix the problem. And what they did is they came up with an online portal so that people could turn the surveys in whenever. You know, after they're done with their barbecue, then they go and they, they fill in the survey. They also worked with UC Davis for a phone app so that people could fill in the surveys on the field. So now that the pilot's done, it's time for broad-scale implementation. And in 2015, the League expanded the program to the North Shore as well as the South Shore. They had 127 participate, uh, new volunteers participate in the program. They had 240 surveys. They identified 66 unique locations of infestations, and they found two new invasive species that nobody had ever even heard of. All the locations where the infestations are are plotted on this Google map, and it's live. You can go online and see it. And 40 agencies use this information to help guard against invasive species. So I've just given you an example of a very successful behavior change program. And I want to switch gears and talk very shortly about a second campaign that was started called Drink Tahoe Tap. And I'm sure some of you in this room have heard about it. It was started by local Tahoe resident Madonna Dunbar, who works for the Tahoe Water Suppliers Association and the Inkind Village General Improvement District. Madonna started this campaign in 2007 because she was concerned about the proliferation of use of water bottles, plastic water bottles, and the resulting garbage. As part of her campaign, she set up uh, taste testing stations around the lake, and to make a point that Tahoe Tap, which is available to residents and businesses 24-7, 365 days a year, for pennies on the gallon, is the best tasting water on the planet. Why would anybody buy bottled water? Since that time, they've distributed 60,000 stickers and 10,000 reusable water bottles, changing or building the awareness for millions of people and changing the behavior of tens and thousands. Just last year, Squaw Valley, which was influenced by this campaign, announced that they would no longer be selling plastic water bottles on the mountain or in the resort. And instead, they're selling reusable water pouches and putting uh, water filling stations around the resort. That one decision is going to eliminate the use of 28,000 water bottles per year. Now, Madonna has very generously donated water pouches. They're in your gift bags. And we have water stations set up right here on the campus. And I'm asking everyone to change your behavior today and not use single-use water bottles. Madonna is one person who had an idea, and her idea took off like wildfire. I don't want anyone in this room to think that you can't influence change. All of us have communities that we influence, whether it's family and friends or your 50 followers on Facebook. Please pass a word to your communities that we all must be stewards of this planet. Wouldn't it be nice if the rest of the world treated the planet like we treat Lake Tahoe? We wouldn't think of dumping garbage in our pristine lake, yet it's being done every day in our oceans. And if we're not mindful, Nevada is going to become our next big garbage ocean. Perhaps we here in Carson City can be a lighthouse or a beacon for how a community works together for a sustainable future. Having an environmentally friendly town will make Carson City more desirable, a community that we want to live in, and a world that is inhabitable for generations to come. Thank you. <laughs>